Okay, good morning, Year 11. Uh, we're back with another one of our uh, GCSE NEA videos. It has been quite some time, but all of you have been working really, really hard on your development. So we're going to go through that today. We're joined by Mr. Longridge. Mr. Longridge, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, you? Yes, very, very good. Yeah. And Mr. Stevens joins us uh, as well. Good morning, Mr. Stevens. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, um, I think it's just important um, just to clarify or at least give some kind of introduction of what it is that we're going to be talking about today. So if you remember, our students formally have completed 2.1, so they've all got a range of maybe 15 different ideas in their sketching. Those sketches have been ranked by their puns and they should all be well underway now with developing those sketches into 3D tangible ideas. So what's today's video really about, Mr. Longridge? So today we're gonna to be thinking about how we take those, uh, the best ideas we have uh, we explore some of them and then we start refining them to make them into one of the best projects that you possibly can. Uh, you're going to be looking at using a variety of different materials, a variety of different techniques to, to really push that idea forward so that at the end of this section you've got a, a really nice final prototype that you're going to be able to, to develop into the final product. And so we're under the impression that students have used their puns to, to sort of drive their decision making um, and so that their, their ideas are meeting the requirements of the end of the primary user or the stakeholder. So what should they be doing then in terms of realizing that into a, into their development? What would you expect to see in these development pages? Okay, so if we take a look at section 2.2, um, it, it's all about taking um, those initial ideas and, and, and modifying them and trying different things out, doing several different iterations to try to improve these designs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's through a variety of different different medium, really. So we, we want to see evidence of sketching. We want to see some 3D modeling, computer modeling, uh, be that SolidWorks, SketchUp, Tinkercad, which, whichever you're most comfortable with, um, plus some three-dimensional prototypes as well. Okay, so we've got a, a nice exemplar uh, piece of material here. You can see just on that one page is a lot of information. Um, we've got evidence of, of freehand sketching, we've got prototyping, we've got some basic computer modeling, um, but it's about the analysis of that. Okay, we can't just uh, do, the, do the sketches and do the modeling. It, have to, it has to be analyzed and you have to justify um, why you've made certain decisions. I'd also say on there, it's nice to see at the bottom left corner, a little bit of research coming in. So as well as uh, the process of developing, you're also bringing in bits of information that will help support and, and push your idea even further. So yeah, that's a nice example. It yeah. is, it's, it's, a, it's a 10 second job, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just, just think, if, I often say to my students, if we've had a conversation about a design idea or a certain aspect of a design idea, just make sure there's a little snippet of that conversation in the folder somewhere. Um, yeah. Because us as your teachers, we know that we've had that conversation, we know you thought about it, but the moderators have never met you and never will meet you. Um, yeah. They have no idea what conversation is happening. So just just grab, uh, grabbing a few quick photographs and, and justifying why you've got them there is is, is a big deal. So yeah. yeah, a couple of things for me really. I mean, the first thing that I'd like to sort of draw people's attention to is is this kind of pink table on the right hand side. So although it doesn't explicitly say that these are the puns the primary user needs, that's exactly what they are. And at this stage in development, you have to be using these pun tables regularly because what you're doing is you're critically analyzing the the, the progress that you're making against the, the primary user needs um, so that's really important and i would encourage all students to have these tables throughout the development phases yep. um, and then the other thing is i, I know that this is something that we're, we're trying to be better at as a center but get yourself in those photographs. Um, yeah. Make sure that there are pictures of you, the, the student actually physically handling the work because I know that's something that we need to sort of work into our, our portfolios really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think another good thing, just I'll, I'll go through a few more slides in a moment. Another good thing about this exemplar is how this student has come up with an idea, um, modeled their idea, but then taken, taken on some feedback from there we go, from stakeholders and primary user, um, and that's all been assessed. Uh, then, based on this feedback on this page, the student has then gone on to make some modifications or iterations to their design 
um, based on the feedback they've just received. And I think that's the critical part of this. It's not just making changes for change's sake, it's making changes based on feedback from the people that um, influence the designs. Yeah, very much so. The The credibility of the, the development is far, far more substantial with, their, with those target user feedback. So it looks like they're showing it to a teacher and then to some students. And uh, yeah, it, it makes it look far, far more realistic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the, the sort of two things that are at play here in terms of the authenticity, it is critically analyzing your progress, making sure that whatever changes you make are justified by your decision making. And that also can incorporate the puns, as I said earlier. But second of all, having a really, really clear narrative of, of how products came to be step by step. Um, what the examiner doesn't want to see are loads of sporadic decisions and ideas that have no justification of being, of being in the same project. You've got to really show the story from start to finish. And that's really what this section is all about. So, um, I mean, a, a very, very good exemplar there that, that surely will help our students in, in, in sort of uh, creating their own section. Um, I'll go through a few more slides, but it's kind of a repeat of the same process. So this, this student has developed five products so presumably the company say 15 initial ideas have then developed five of those and so there's the, the same three slides repeated just for different products so again sketching feedback changes initial idea feedback changes it's repeated the same process for five different products mm -hmm. before they can choose their best product to develop for the next section yeah there's a, there's, a, there's a really nice mixture there or blend of written work of tables of sketch work models and, in, and of course photographic evidence that the stakeholder has actually uh, interacted with this product and that's what we want we want this sort of rich media uh, to tell the story essentially that's right and if you, if you look at the, the the quality of the prototypes for example on this slide mm. there's nothing amazing about them because they don't need to be at this stage um, it's, it's about being quick just being able to communicate that idea in a three-dimensional form to somebody else um, so if, if we're spending lesson upon lesson on, pro on one prototype, we're kind of doing it wrong. We should be able to make a few prototypes in a single lesson. Yeah, I'd also say that it's it's quite normal for a, a single prototype to be tested and then developed further. So especially in the graphic side of things where you might make something and then you can simply cut in and refine that design to, to make it do something slightly different. Uh, so it, a lot of uh, a lot of these iterations may be the same model, just developing slightly and progressing further based on feedback to push that into a, a final working prototype. Yeah, I mean, just before we close on this one section, then before we go to two point three, looking at the the criteria in the higher mark bands, it does say appropriate modelling and testing of materials, components, and processes throughout. <laughs> So by you know just using that word appropriate, it means that your modeling, it needs to be clear that it, sh it should be on the page. It isn't just you coming up with something and taking a snapshot. It needs to be relevant to your project. Yeah. Also, it says all relevant requirements are considered and conflicts resolved through a structured approach. So this is you recording your thought process and you might want to highlight that, but you, you are basically signposting the time, the, the, the instance where you decide to change an idea and why and then stakeholders and users test the news models and give feedback to inform iterations. Yes. yes, you have to work as a designer. You have to think of how a designer would change ideas to make them better, but you should, as much as possible, have input from your stakeholder because ultimately, that's who you're designing the product for. Yeah. It also gives you a great opportunity to add additional research into materials. I know, noticed you said materials then. Yeah. Uh, so as you're doing this, you might think, well, I'm, I'm making this out of cardboard, corrugated cardboard. How can I protect it from water? And then you may go off and do a series of mini tests or experiments to see how different treatments or surface finishes could uh, enhance or reinforce the, car the corrugated card so it would last longer. So any additional testing or, or supplementary research is, is really, uh, really valuable here. <laughs> Should we take a quick look at 2.3 as well? Because we, we so, when we teach it, it flows through 2.2, 2.3 kind of become the same thing really but in the in terms of the assessing the marks um, they are two separate subsections so 2.3 yeah. is, is a continuation um, but it's where we are now sort of really drilling down onto, onto details and looking at developing that one very very best idea yeah so we've, we've had initial ideas we've developed several of those 
we're now going to choose the best one and develop that even further to become what can be as close to perfect as possible. So it might not be developing the overall appearance of it. It might be just zoning in on certain sections that might need to be tested out or improved. Um, so this is, as you can see, some form of music stand. Um, mm -hmm. This student has gone on to test different mechanisms for making it adjustable. Um, so from an ergonomic perspective, uh, very, very useful. They've looked at different methods for making the, the actual music stand section adjustable, again, to make it more comfortable for a wider range of users. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see as, it, as we go through um, all these little sections that have been developed, these iterations come together to make the final idea. Yeah. I think what, what we tend to find is that in the early development stages, students are really exploring form. They're really exploring shape and perhaps not zooming in or focusing on mechanisms. You know, yeah. this, is, this is clearly the area where when you've got an idea and the form is absolutely right and you've made some decisions, then it's really about what standard components am I going to use? What production techniques am I going to use? How am I going to realize this into a working prototype? Whereas previously it might just be, how's it going to look? Um, so this is why you get these zoomed in, um, looking at, you know, things like, what, I don't know what that looks like. A ball, ball, yeah, ball and yeah. socket. So it's a ball and socket, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's really about going from a macro scale, so the, the, what the product looks like, to a micro scale in how does it work and how am I going to get this prototype to function. And also try, try to build in where you can a, a range of techniques, again, to demonstrate that you understand these processes and, and look at what, what's available to you. Yeah. Obviously make it relevant to your product, but do try to experiment with a wider range of uh, techniques as possible. You're right, sir. it's about using a range of tools, a range of machinery, uh, just to show that the, the depth of the skill sets of the student. Yeah.